Alright guys, welcome back. So today what I want to go over are the seven priorities of survival, a basic kit list or the components in a basic survival kit, and then how to turn those items into multifunctional items by adding a few things, manipulating the materials just a little bit, and then a few tips and tricks to make each one of those items in that basic kit more multifunctional and more multi-purpose, basically creating an advanced survival kit. The seven priorities of survival, the ones that I was taught, fire, water, food, shelter, those four being the highest priority, not necessarily in that order, and then navigation, first aid, and signaling. There are other mnemonics, there are other acronyms out there for survival priorities, but those seven carry well across all domains of survival. And that's what we're going to use today to go over our kit and then approve upon our kit. Let's get started. All right, that first item in our kit is going to be that survival knife. Here, just have a more companion HD, a little bit thicker of a model, Scandi grind, high carbon steel, rat tail tang, but a fixed blade with a rubberized handle, good for gripping, especially when I have poor dexterity. but a good knife for our survival kit. One that is relatively cheap, but still a good quality knife like this Mora is gonna be perfect for a survival kit. So it's gonna be our first item in our survival kit. For our second item in our survival kit, it's gonna be something for fire, one of the seven principles or priorities of survival. And here I just have a six inch by half inch ferrule rod, thousands and thousands and thousands of fires or sparks out of this to get fire. even with marginal material around me, but this thing means I have attempts at thousands and thousands of fires to get a fire going as one of our priorities for survival fire. Next in our kit, we're gonna need something that covers the seven priorities of survival for everything from shelter to improvisational skills for food trapping or land navigation that's going to be corded. Here I just have a hank of 550 cord that's going to go in our kit as one of the many items that are hard to recreate from the landscape without prior knowledge but can function across all domains of priorities of survival. So 550 cord is going to be our cordage. All right, next for shelter, shelter being one of the priorities of survival, I have this space blanket. This is a higher durable, longer lasting space blanket as opposed to the emergency pocket survival space blankets that you guys may have seen. But this thing I can use as a blanket, I can use as overhead cover, I can use it as a reflector because of the mylar covering inside. I prefer the OD green just because I'm a military guy, but this is going to be my emergency cover for shelter priority for survival. All right, so we've gone over fire and shelter. Next is water. Water being probably one of the most important, if not the most important, survival priority in a lot of situations. But Old Faithful, a canteen, canteen cup with a canteen pouch is going to be the probably one of the best, if not the best, survival water carrying devices and purification devices or water purification kits that we have at our disposal. I've used this thing for years and years and years and years. As you guys can see, we're practically blood relatives right now, but a canteen cup and canteen with a pouch is gonna serve as the containers for water being one of our priorities of survival. All right, so I've gone over fire, shelter, water, now let's talk food. For food, I have a MRE. You should never, ever go a field without putting some sort of food in your survival kit or in your kit, um, especially if you know that you're going into a place where you might end up being lost or you're spending the night and eating food requirements, especially in a cold environment like the one I'm in right now. We tend to burn a lot more calories as humans in colder environments trying to keep our bodies warm. But I have a MRE right here that I can pack. These things are durable, long lasting, and you know, when you're hungry enough, you eat just about anything. So for food, I'm going to have an MRE as part of my kit ready to go. So we've covered food, water, shelter, and fire. Now let's go over the last three of our seven priorities of survival. Number five being land navigation. Now, land navigation is a perishable skill, but for land navigation, a compass will do wonders for a survivalist or a regular person in a survival scenario, especially if they understand the environment around them and the landscape and how to read it. But with a general understanding of where you are, you can take a compass like this one, the Silver Ranger, and use it 
to find cardinal directions and then find terrain features and move out on a known azimuth to self-rescue or find points of interest. But a good compass is going to be that item for uh, the fifth survival priority, which is land navigation. Our sixth priority of survival is signaling. I prefer to have something more personal, which is a headlamp. A headlamp is multifunctional, obviously, but I can use this as a signaling device for rescue. I can use this during hours of limited visibility. I can move to different points of elevation. Then I can see what I'm doing. For signaling, I'm going to have this headlamp. Our last priority of the seven priorities of survival is medical aid. Medical aid, I have just a small survival tin that I've packed with different bandages and cordage, some tape, different medical items like pills or chapstick, but I'm going to have a small medical aid kit with me as part of that last priority of survival. Now that we have an idea of basic components that go in a survival kit, let's take these items that we have right here. I'm going to show you now different tips and tricks, different methods, modifications, and some additions to this kit to actually make it much more multi-purpose and multifunctional as a survival kit. Let's go. All right, let's start with the knife as our first modification. We'll just go right down the list. Now with the knife, this Mora Companion HD, very good knife. We can modify the sheath and add just a few simple items to make this a multifunctional or even a survival kit in and of itself. One thing I'm going to do is add a whipping of 550 cord down the sheath. Once I'm done with that whipping, I like to take inner tube, uh, bike inner tube, cut up into smaller sections and place one at the bottom and then one at the top of my sheath to hold that 550 in place. And then I like to take one more uh, piece of inner tube and put it around through the belt clip here to actually hold my knife in place so that when I dump it out, I don't lose that knife in the event it falls out or wants to fall out on me. It's secure in place. Last thing I like to do with this knife is put a small loop of 550 cord through the belt clip. And you guys can see the belt clip right here. It's just a piece of plastic and oftentimes anybody who's had a mora like this knows if you have this around your belt and the bottom of the knife gets caught on something, you have the chance to actually break the clip off. I don't want to do that because I can still use the clip back here in a neck carry configuration if I want, but I want to maintain the integrity of the sheath overall because I can use it for a lot of different things. But I can put a loop of 550 through here and then string my belt through that. That way it's kind of like a dangler and it'll just dangle in place and not get caught up on anything. One other thing we can do with this knife is take a file and scrape the back of our knife on the spine. to give us that 90 degree spine so we can use the back of our knife as a scraper on our ferro rod. as well as a scraper for materials like fatwood to make shavings for future fires. One other point is that the inner tube that we placed along our sheath to hold our knife in place and hold the whipping of 550 cord in place is also flammable. We can use that for fire starting. So those are the modifications to the knife. All right, let's talk ferro rod real quick. So for priority of fire for survival. We have our ferro rod. Now there are a couple of things we can do to this ferro rod to make it a little bit more usable for us and then add a couple of features to it to safeguard it and keep it in a somewhat waterproof storage container. A couple of things we can do. If you guys have noticed I've added a lanyard onto my fire steel and then a little bit of tape at the base to give me a little bit better purchase and a handhold when I take it to go strike sparks off of it for lighting a fire.
Another thing we can do with this ferro rod is create a sheath for it out of 100 mile an hour tape. 100 mile an hour tape is just fancy speak for duct tape. But we can take that 100 mile an hour tape, make a sheath for our ferro rod, and we can make that sheath a little bit bigger, like an envelope, and we can place fine tinder along with our ferro rod inside that sheath to keep it protected, prevent the ferro rod from eroding or damage, and then protect that fine tinder until it's time to start a fire. So we can improve on this ferro rod by adding an envelope of 100 mile an hour tape. Plus the 100 mile an hour tape we can, we can take off, cut up into fine pieces, and that can become a tinder bundle as well. All right, to improve on our fire kit even more is to take our lighter and put 100 mile an hour tape around our lighter. We can take a foot or two of 100 mile an hour tape and wrap it around our lighter. To give us that much more versatility in our fire kit, we can take that tape off, use it as a flame extender with our lighter. take that tape, use it improvisationally. We can use it for bandages. We can use it to repair our kit, repair other items, use it for a signaling device. We always want to be looking for ways to fit those small things in our kit to make it that much more versatile. In the event I lose my ferro rod, I still have a lighter and I still have tape around it, giving me a multifunctional tool, a multi-purpose tool, that is worth its weight in gold. We can add a Fresnel lens for solar ignition. And then emergency tinder for fire because fire is such an incredibly important priority of survival. It will warm you, it will signal for help, it will cook your food, it will purify your water, it will keep you warm at night. It acts as a signal and does a lot for you. And so improving upon our kit and adding smaller, more compact means for getting a fire going, especially in an emergency, is going to be crucial for that priority of survival fire. All right, cordage. Now, cordage is versatile, multi-purpose in and of itself, but just by definition, what we can do to make our life easier on the front end is with our survival kit, always have a hank of good cordage laying around for utility use but have another one created like this, a quick deploy ridge line that we can use to string up our shelter. Making it just that much easier for us to put up a shelter quickly in a survival situation, giving us time on the back end for fire starting, material gathering, water purification, and other tasks in a survival scenario. But creating a quick deploy ridge line gives us extra cordage and then makes it that much easier for us to facilitate shelter, another priority of survival. Let's talk shelter. Now I've got my grammar space blanket right here, OD green, which I prefer, but we can do a few things to make it more multifunctional and then stronger for us. Now what we can do is add tape and 550 cord to the grommets like the one I have here. Adding that tape strengthens the corner, which tend to rip a lot with these uh, smaller, cheaper space blankets. And then 550 cord right here as a means of, or a point of contact or connection with our quick deploy ridge line. Using toggles to string up a shelter, make it that much easier for us. So we take some of the load off the actual grommet itself and onto the 550 cord. Another thing we can do to make this more multifunctional is take Gorilla Tape and add three X's on the Mylar side of this blanket to function as a makeshift signaling device in an emergency scenario. Now with this blanket, it's multifunctional in and of itself, keeping us warm, sheltering us. We can use it as a signal or a reflector. We can add a few things to this blanket to make it that much more multi-purpose for us, being a couple of different trash bags. Now what I have here are just 
drum liners, 55 gallon drum liners that we can use to act as browse beds. We can use them as improvised ponchos, their containers to collect materials. We can use them as a part of a suspended shelter. We can use these trash bags very easily and reuse them because they're tough material. I believe these are 55 gallon drum liners, three mil. We can use these with our grabber space blanket to improve upon our shelter. Two other things that we could add are gonna be an orange trash bag, same purpose as the drum liners, but we can use this again for more signaling this time around. And then a painter's cloth or plastic painter's cloth. I believe this is 0.7 mil thickness and roughly 12 feet by 12 feet. We can use this with our thermal blanket to make a super shelter. So those are a couple lightweight options to go along with our shelter and then some modifications to our shelter item to make it that much more multifunctional and multi-purpose for us. Water for survival. Now, bomb proof is absolutely correct. The canteen, canteen cup, and the canteen pouch are a bomb proof kit in and of themselves. They act as a carrying device right here with the pouch. You can also put materials for fire or different resources, materials we gather. We can gather them in this canteen pouch. And then we can purify our water and store it with the canteen and canteen cup. We need to have a way to store water and move water with us as we travel if we have to self-rescue. There's not much to improve upon these items. The canteen cup itself is multifunctional in that we can use it to purify water. We can use it to make char cloth, which I've shown you guys in another video. We can use this to dig. We can use this to cook our food in, store materials in. The canteen cup is a great piece of kit to have, and it's relatively cheap and easy to find. Along with the canteen, it makes transporting water and purifying water very easy compared to primitive methods. A way to improve upon a canteen and canteen cup is to use all metal containers. Here I just have an all metal canteen that I can use to purify almost 40 ounces of water in and then the nesting cup inside that I can use to purify water in as well or cook food at the same time. This is still a multi-purpose, multi-functional item that is very good for water in a survival scenario. All right, one way to improve upon a canteen, canteen cup, and the pouch is by adding a filter or some sort of filter to your kit. It's lightweight portable. This filter works with a little bit of manpower. All I have to do is take this cup, fill it up with water to the line etched on the outside of the cup, take the filter, which is the upper portion here with the internal tubing, put it on top, press it down, and then within a few seconds, I have clean water to drink. I also have a lid that I can put on top of my bottle, sealing it off, and I have roughly 16 ounces of water right here that is filtered, ready to drink, that I can travel with. So having a filter like this in our kit will only increase our water collection, purification, and transport gain. It's good to go. All right, guys, not much that can be done to improve upon uh, MREs and some of the backpacker meals out there. They've tried their best and Sometimes it's just not good enough. What we can do is add a small kit, a small survival kit like the one I have here. This is a my sear sewing kit, which you guys have seen me before, and I've mentioned it probably ad nauseum by now. But I have fishing line, hooks, I have safety pins, repair items, I have snare wire in here as well, and I can use this smaller kit to help me acquire food or catch food in a survival scenario. I'm going to add my sear sewing kit to my survival kit, lightweight compact, to help supplement for food when I'm out in a survival scenario. All right, so we're getting toward the end of our survival kit equipment under the seven priorities of survival. Now with signaling, I showed you guys the headlamp as part of my basic kit. And you guys have seen already with the grabber space blanket, with the ferro rod additions to our fire kit, we can still use the headlamp as a signaling device, but we've already created other signaling devices in our kit. 
with the grabber space bank and reflector with the three X's. With our ferrule rod starting fires, we can use fires during day and night for signaling. With the mirror in our compass, we use that to signal as well. We already have multifunctional items built in our kit with just a few modifications to create multifunctioning, multipurpose items. In the event we drop this headlamp, we still have other ways to effectively signal for rescue. But we're going to maintain this headlamp along with those other items for the survival priority of signaling. All right, navigation. So sixth item, navigation. Just got the Silver Ranger compass that I have right here. Not a lot I'm going to do to improve upon uh, Silva's uh, Ranger compass right here, but I do have a few ideas. The compass is already multi-purpose in that I have a signaling mirror that I'm shining you guys with right now. It's got the magnification lens for improvised fire starting and then the compass, protractor, and measuring increments on here. One thing we can do to make this a little bit more user-friendly for people who are beginner land navigators is adding a set of pace beads pace beads or ranger beads are just a way of measuring distance over time as we walk with our given pace count. Another thing I can do is add a whistle to the pace beads to act as another signal. So I'm improving the signaling on here with the sighting mirror and now the whistle. So I have color contrast and movement and then I've added sound to this signaling device. And then the last thing I like to do with these compasses is take illumination tape. Illumination tape will soak up the sun's rays today and at night it will shine or illuminate. I like to take this tape and put it right over top of my compass on the exterior. So I can use it in the event I drop it at night. I can find it with illumination tape or if I have a map marker and I need to make a note at night about different pace or azimuth or lengths or whatever I'm doing with land navigation, I can write it on here with a map marker and use that and refer to that at nighttime. But those are just a couple of options with the compass for the survival priority of navigation. All right, last priority of survival that we talked about, number seven, is going to be first aid. Here I just have my routine first aid kit. Again, bandages and just minor things for routine care. One thing I like to carry with me as part of my medical kit that you can add to your kit besides just having a routine medical kit with you in a small tin is going to be what I call a blowout kit. A blowout kit is meant to treat severe trauma to the extremities or thoracic cavity and even the head neck area. Now let's go over this really quick. The first thing I'm going to have in my blowout kit is going to be that tourniquet, a tourniquet for external bleeding in the event they take a catastrophic wound or injury to an extremity. I can put this high and tight and close off the blood preventing exsanguination. Exsanguination is death through blood loss. But tourniquet is going to be the first thing I use to treat major injury or harm to an extremity. this in my kit. Next I'm going to have combat gauze. Combat gauze, I can take this, shove it inside an injury or a wound. It's treated with different compounds to prevent blood loss and stop blood loss at the source. Find the point of origin, sweep the blood away, put this inside, and stop the bleeding at its source. Combat gauze is going to be the next item in my kit. Next I'm going to have an Israeli dressing, just a pressure dressing that I can put over a wound. I can also use this in place of combat gauze. Or if the wound is not that damaging, I can use this instead to cover up an injury. Start packaging that wound depending on what it is. I can even use this around my head or my neck. I can use this around uh, different portions of my body to close up a wound and prevent the loss of blood with this Israeli dressing. But this is going to be the next item in my blowout kit. The next couple items in my kit are meant for the chest area. I'm going to have two hyphen chest seals. These are plastic seals. As you can see on the back with the pictures that I can take out and place one on the entrance, one on the exit wound behind me to prevent collapsing my lung in the event I take some sort of penetrating trauma to the chest or thoracic cavity. I'm going to have this as part of my kit to prevent 
lungs from collapsing or prevent tension pneumothorax. In the event tension pneumothorax develops, which is just the collapsing of the lung, I can take this, which is a 14 gauge needle, 14 gauge needle, I can take this, place the needle over the affected area in the second intercostal space above the third rib and insert it into the chest cavity, relieving the pressure, leaving the catheter in place, removing the needle. I can release the air and the tension built up in the collapsed side of my thoracic cavity, preventing the collapsing of the good lung and relieving the tension inside of the thoracic cavity to allow me to breathe better. This is going to be that last item in my blowout kit. That's my blowout kit, and this is going to go on the external pack or pocket of my rucksack so I can access it quickly to treat myself. If I have some sort of injury or wound. All right, so that covers it for the seven priorities of survival. One more thing we can look at adding to our kit besides a good backpack to carry all of our items or some sort of uh, pouch to put all of our items in is a notebook and pencil. Here I just have a right in the rain notebook and a pencil. This is in a grid format. I like the grid format because we can use it for recreating maps or making maps, more to follow later. And then we can use this to recreate different land navigational aids like a solar compass. to land navigate. But having this gives us the ability to recreate land navigational aids, create maps, and then leave notes and keep a diary of our survival scenario. So it's a good thing to add to our kit. Now, sometimes the knife is not enough for a survival scenario. To make our lives a little bit easier, it would behoove us to include a secondary cutting tool. In this case, I have a saw, this small Baco Laplander saw I've had for years and years and years. It makes life a lot easier in a survival scenario taking down materials and processing them for shelter and for fire. So add a secondary cutting tool along with your survival knife to make life just that much easier. All right guys, so that does it for this video. Ranger survival kit, how to make a kit, adhering to the seven principles or seven priorities of survival, and then modifications and subtle tips and tricks and techniques to change those items in a basic kit to make them more multifunctional and more versatile, multi-purpose for us in the field. And it's a kit that is lightweight and easy to use. But I hope you guys like this video. If you did like that video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me and for the channel, for all your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.